Did you know that mobile devices account for over 50% of all website traffic? That's why it's more important than ever to make sure that your website looks fantastic on tablets and smartphones in addition to computers. Keep watching to learn about five common mobile responsive mistakes and how to avoid them. Hi there, I'm Christine with Thrive Themes, and in this video, I'll be going over some common mistakes that people make when trying to build a mobile responsive website, and I'll show you some techniques that you can use instead. Now, if you've made any of these mistakes before, don't feel bad, you are in good company, we've all made them. But before we dive in, there's three things that I think will be helpful for you to know first. Number one, if you don't wanna deal with any mobile responsiveness, you're in luck because all of the templates that come with Thrive Theme Builder and Thrive Architect are mobile responsive right out of the box. All of the theme templates, page blocks, and pre-built landing pages already look really good on tablets and smartphones, so if you're pressed for time, you can stick with those and you'll be all set. Number two is knowing the difference between an absolute unit such as pixels and a relative unit such as percentage. Absolute units such as the pixel are fixed measurable units. Relative units such as percentage will scale in relationship to another object, which in the case of mobile responsiveness is usually the container immediately surrounding it. Number three is knowing that there are certain breakpoints that will determine which version of a website will be displayed. The breakpoints in Thrive Architect and Thrive Theme Builder are as follows. Any viewport wider than 1025 pixels will display the desktop version of your page. Any viewport narrower than 1025 pixels but wider than 768 pixels will show the tablet version. Any viewport narrower than 768 pixels will show the mobile version. Now you don't need to memorize the exact numbers, but just knowing that they exist might help you to understand what's going on behind the scenes. So let's dive into mistake number one, starting your responsive design process with mobile devices. Here at Thrive Themes, we recommend designing for desktop first, tablet second, and addressing mobile design last. Now, just to cover our bases, what's gonna happen if you start designing in mobile mode and then work your way up? Well, it's just a lot more work. And that's because when you begin your designs in desktop mode, they'll cascade down to smaller screen sizes. And typically in Thrive Architect, you don't need to make huge drastic layout changes in tablet and mobile mode. It's usually just minor tweaks. But if you start in mobile mode, when you get to tablet mode, you'll have to make the same customizations all over again. And then again, when you get to desktop mode. So depending on your layout, you could potentially triple your workload. So we definitely recommend starting with desktop first. Mistake number two, using huge padding and margins. As a general rule, padding and margins should be used for minor spacing adjustments. Large adjustments such as moving an element that's currently on the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen should generally be done with alignment and advanced positioning options. So let's look at an example. Let's say that you'd like to display this image that's currently on the left you want it on the right side of the screen. You might be inclined to just use a margin of say 800 pixels, but let's see why that doesn't work. All right, so it looks okay on desktop. Now if we go to the mobile mode, it's gone. And now you are messaging support and you are cursing Thrive Themes. It's actually still there, it's just off screen. So instead of using large pixel numbers to place elements on the page, you can do one of two things. Number one, you can use alignment and relative positioning. So let's go back to the desktop mode. Let's get rid of this 800 pixels and let's just align this to the right. So that already did it, but you can also fine tune this positioning. If you go to the uh, relative mode down here, and you can increase these pixels as you like. And you can see that these pixel numbers are going to be much smaller than 800 pixels. And so it'll, you'll still need to do some adjustments in tablet and mobile mode, but things won't be falling off the screen like they were before. The second solution is to use percentage instead of pixels. So let's clear this out.
All right, so to use percentage, we'll just click on this little PX here and we'll select percent. And then let's select 50 for the left side. And that means that this left side of the image will begin at exactly 50% of the screen. So then we'll go to the tablet mode. We'll see that it's the same here and it works for the mobile mode as well. Mistake number three, using large pixel quantities with fixed or minimum widths. So elements that are assigned a minimum width will display the specified size or larger. Elements that are assigned a fixed width will display the specified size regardless of the screen size. So now what's going to happen if a fixed width is larger than the screen size? Well, it'll get cut off or you might get a horizontal screen uh, scroll bar. So let's set this content box to a fixed width of 1000 pixels. And let's see what it looks like on tablet. We can see that it gets cut off on the right side here and on mobile, it gets cut off as well. So how do we avoid the situation? Solution one, you can use the percentage unit instead of the pixel unit, because remember percentage will scale the element proportionally to the container around it, where the pixel unit is a fixed measure. So let's go back to the desktop view. Let's get rid of this. Let's change this to a percentage. And let's say that we want this to be about 80% of the width of the screen. So now when we go to tablet view, that works fine. And it looks just fine in mobile as well. The second solution is to use max width. The maximum width setting will display an element so that its width will never exceed the quantity that you specify. And this translates well to smaller screens because the width of the element will automatically size to fit the screen. So let's go ahead and make this a max width. Let's go get rid of this and let's make this a max width of 800 pixels. So on desktop, that will limit the width to 800 pixels. And if we go to tablet view, you'll see that it has resized so that everything is still on the screen. And on mobile view, it did the exact same thing. Mistake number four, using columns when another solution works better. One of the most common mobile responsive design challenges that you will likely come across is figuring out how to place two elements next to each other while keeping them aligned properly across all screen sizes. So a common thing to do is um, something like an icon next to text. The problem when using columns is that the icon is aligned right and the text is aligned left. So when viewed on a cell phone, this is how they look. Not so great. Um, you can definitely use columns and you can adjust things to make it work on tablet and mobile, but there are two other solutions that you can use. Solution number one is to just use the styled list element. So let's see how that works. So here we have a styled list element. Let's just go ahead and get rid of the ones that we don't need. So now let's substitute this icon for an icon that we want. Let's just go ahead and choose this one for now. And then you can just change your text to whatever it is. Now you might wonder, how do you place this on the page? All right, so now you can just go to the max width and you can shrink this down to whatever you need it to be. And then if you want it aligned middle, you can press the uh, middle, uh, the align center button or the align right. If you want it um, just a little bit away from the, from the right side, you can go to advanced and relative positioning and play with positioning that way. Solution two, use max width, absolute positioning and a content box. Personally, I like this method because once you understand it, you'll be able to apply it to several different elements, not just ones involving icons and text. So let's see how this works. Let's add a content box to the page. Let's add an icon inside of the box. 
Okay, let's choose an apple. Let's go ahead and slide that to the left and let's add a text element right under the icon. Okay. All right. So the next thing we want to do is get the text on the same line as the apple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the advanced positioning and I'm going to choose absolute and I'm going to choose the upper right hand um, position. Now that's going to put it in the upper right hand position of the container around it. So that's going to be all the way across the page. In order to bring those two together, we can shrink the size of the content box. And now to make the text more level with the apple, we'll make sure that's highlighted, go back to absolute positioning and then use the directional fields. All right, so now we have um, the two elements inside of a content box. And if you want those centered, just make sure that the content box is highlighted, then go to center alignment. Mistake number five, not grouping elements that should stay together. One of the most frustrating challenges with responsive design is when you build something in desktop mode and then tablet and mobile mode just doesn't look right. So let's take a look at this. We've got this on desktop. And then when we shrink the browser, Huh. Yeah, our text jumps out to the right. So the problem here is that there's nothing forcing these elements to stay close to each other. There needs to be some kind of structure to group these elements together and have them stick together. The solution is to simply place both elements inside of a content box. So let's see how to do that. All right, so let's add a content box to our page. Next, let's add an image inside the content box. And now let's add some text just underneath the image. All right, so what we need to do is we need to place this text in the lower right hand corner of the content box. So make sure that your text is selected and then you'll go to layout and position, click the advanced tab, click on absolute, and then choose from one of these four buttons, depending on where you want your image placed. And I'll choose the third one for the lower right hand side. And then you can use these directional fields to tweak the, uh, the placement. All right. So now let's take a look at what that looks like in tablet and mobile mode. All right. So that is how you make your pages mobile responsive using thrive architect. And although we didn't look at thrive theme builder, these concepts and techniques will work with your theme templates as well. Now, if you don't have Thrive Architect or Thrive Theme Builder yet, be sure to check out the Thrive membership, which includes all of the Thrive tools. You can go to thrivethemes.com slash membership to get more info. And if you have any questions about mobile responsiveness, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.